This is Elizabeth Arventura, PhD, former Dean of the College of Social Sciences and Philosophy and Chair of the Department of Psychology, who has devoted her entire professional life to the university and has taught and practiced psychology in the Philippine context. Her many contributions to the field of psychology have been focused on three major areas. One, developmental psychology, two, psychological assessment and measurement, and three, health psychology, all firmly anchored in the Philippine setting and context. Dr. Ventura has also significantly contributed to the university in various capacities as department chair, college dean, headed the counseling section of the UP Pahinubun system when it first began. She has been involved in addressing important organizational and pedagogical concerns, such as the evaluation and improvement of the SET, the UPCAT, the GE program. Two, the development of the syllabus and textbook for the Social Science One GE course, one of the early prototypes for interdisciplinary and team-taught courses in the university. Three, uh, university outreach efforts, particularly in responding to national disasters in the area of psychological health and well-being. And I am uh, Maria Cecilia Gastardo Conaco. I was, I'm Professor Emeritus currently, and I was Betty's former student, in the long time student and collaborator of the Department of Psychology. So Betty, shall we begin? Please tell us a little about your personal background. Uh, first, perhaps about your early socialization and education in Baguio that may have implanted the stimuli for your later years. What or who were your early influences and how did these direct your perspectives of work in the field? Okay. Well, maybe I have to begin with uh, the fact that I grew up in a large extended family. So, uh, relatives were always coming in and out of our house. Uh, some of them stayed for years. <laughs> uh, others would come um, during vacation time. But I, early on, I was exposed to a variety of people. And maybe it was these diverse uh, types of individuals that made me early on reflect on individual differences. Um, the reason why I use the word reflect is I spent a lot of time alone reading, mm -hmm. <laughs> reading everything that was uh, available to me at home, uh, simply because the sibling ahead of me was five years older, and the one after me was three years younger. So uh, I, I really had enough time, I think, you know, to be a reflective individual, which I think is very important as a psychologist because you have to be reflective and uh, empathetic mm -hmm. and dealing with all kinds of people who sometimes would bully you, who sometimes would uh, fight with you or show you affection. So I was exposed to also a variety of reactions early mm -hmm. on. And uh, maybe the fact that uh, this extended family that was coming in and out of our house uh, didn't really stay long enough for me to get to know them, mm -hmm. but I had to deal with them. And mm -hmm. so that taught me also to uh, uh, be more responsive to strangers. Mm -hmm. okay. So it was really the interaction? The that interaction, was... That, that was part of my socialization. But uh, I think my parents also had an influence mm -hmm. in uh, what I eventually became. My mother was uh, uh, really the sounding board for all the problems <laughs> of relatives. And I could see how uh, she would empathize and try to help them. Mm -hmm. uh, she was also spiritual, not in the sense of religious, but... Uh, to me, as a child, she seemed like she was in touch with everybody to the point of sensing what they needed and sensing who was in trouble, even if they were not present. Like she knew, she sort of sensed who, who of my siblings needed help at that point, uh, 
or that they were in trouble and she didn't even know what it was all about. So, uh, so all of these things that uh, are, uh, let's say, not really ordinary experiences mm -hmm. for other people and the fact that I had to be alone and think about things that were happening around me helped me to really be interested in other people too. She was also a storyteller. So mm -hmm. at night, she would tell us stories. I think some, some of these were invented by her. And they always tried to communicate a value or a lesson to us. She was so good in storytelling that uh, we cried when it was a sad story. Mm -hmm. And we were really afraid when it was, uh, you know, a some sort of a horror story. My father, on the other hand, was in charge of everything in the development of uh, the electrical system, the water system uh, of Baguio. Mm -hmm. So he really had a big, big uh, work, uh, work team. And um, I could, see, well, from him, I think I learned lessons about how to manage people and how to deal with crisis situations. Mm -hmm. Because we were in Baguio and uh, during summer, there would be a sudden influx of people coming around. So we would be short on electricity. He built the hydroelectric plant uh, of Baguio, mm -hmm. situated in Asin. Mm -hmm. so, um, so all of these things, uh, not, not just how he managed people, and I could see some of them were fearful of him. Some of them showed affection towards him. But uh, I remember that he was also a counselor for the marital problems of his workers. I remember one woman running into our house and diving under our dining table because uh, her husband was running after her and he was violent with respect to her. That was one thing that I really appreciated from my father. He, he could not stand people uh, making up a to women mm -hmm. because even my brothers, they would be punished if they physically hurt us, mm -hmm. the, 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 the girls in the family. So he was protective of women and uh, sometimes he, he wasn't a doctor Lamai in the sense that he would, he would punish his, his workers who uh -huh. violated uh, some of the things that were expected of them. So uh, it, that was the context of my early socialization. But much of this was really like implicit learning, you know, from observing their from role observing, models, yes, your mother yes. and your father. And reflecting on it, reflecting on it. And then uh, now maybe we can move on a little bit to, uh, is, is there anything well, else you would okay. like to say about the influences may, may, of family? Uh, also, <laughs> the emphasis on individual differences was very clear in my experience with my aunts who who were very different from each other, mm -hmm. okay? I, like. uh, I had one of them as my Ninang. She was very demure, soft-spoken. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what else? Uh, did all the right things. <laughs> but I, on the other hand, her sister smoked, drank, uh, and was really sort of loud in a way, and uh, I remember her showing me her legs and said, telling me that she had nice legs, which my Nina would never do. So, um, so that even as a child, you would ask yourself, mm -hmm. why are these two so different when they share the same, you know, family context mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Of course, I didn't have the answers then, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, so... Oh, okay. I actually am thankful for having a large extended family. Okay, it provided a lot of the questions for your later science. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, then, then when you went to school, you started in Baguio, right? How, yes, how was I that? studied. Yeah. I, um, I'm a public school product. Uh -huh. That was the time when public schools were the best schools, mm -hmm. I, I think. You know? So that was just after the war. So mm -hmm. uh, I went to um, public elementary school. Uh, it was called New Baguio 
Central School because there was an old Baguio Central School. Uh, I graduated valedictorian. Uh, my um, my teachers said that I could read when I was already in grade one, and my siblings said I started reading at four. Oh, so, anyway, so reading was very important to me, mm -hmm. and I sort of uh, I think read more than my classmates mm -hmm. and so on. So my elementary years. My teachers didn't have that much influence on me, I think. Mm -hmm. no. But in high school, I had teachers who encouraged me to write. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, they gave me a, gave me a, one of them gave me a book, and she did, she said, "There, uh, dear Elizabeth, as an inspiration because you can write." Okay, so <laughs> because of, of that kind of reinforcement, I started thinking maybe I should be an English major. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, in college, okay, in college. Um, so I uh, academically, I re I really continued to do very well in school. Mm -hmm. I edited our high school paper. I wrote short stories and stuff like that. Uh, so my English teachers were very influential mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, I looked up to them uh, and so on. But uh, so from there, I went to college and uh, it was the time when UP Baguio opened for the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had my first year in UP Baguio and uh, my classmates then were from... Mm -hmm. The classical, uh, you, uh, St. Louis had an, a classical curriculum. They call it classical. What, what, how is that? So, <laughs> uh, well, the only thing classical there was they, they learned Latin. They, they, they had a subject on Latin. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so uh, uh, that's where we were classmates with uh, General Duenas. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you took English your first year? Yeah. You had and, uh, well, GE naman eh. Ah, GE. Everybody okay. had GE. Ah, GE lang yung first year. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you were already an English major? No. No, you were no, not. No, no we're, major. We were not. We okay. were not. Because since UP Baguio starting, I don't think they could talk about majors. Okay. Um, so it was just like the university college. Okay. You know? okay. Mm -hmm. So then I came to Diliman. Wait, let's let's wait a little bit. You you mentioned there were some major influences, teachers at Baguio who kind of you know pushed you along. Ah uh, yes, uh, Dean Dean uh, Rolla. Mm -hmm. Dean Rolla was uh, an English teacher there ah. at that time. She was uh, and uh, Professor Arvisu, Lourdes Arvisu, mm -hmm. also from the English department. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, actually. Uh, let me see, do I remember his name? He became the chair of zoology here. Mm. He was my teacher in zoology 11, which mm -hmm. I already took in the first, first uh -huh. year. Okay. And, and you mentioned Dean Rolla. I mean, over the years I've known you, actually, you mentioned her quite a bit. The, the kind, what, what, what kind yeah, of uh, well, actually, influences did you Dean pick up from Rolla, her? Dean Rolla, uh, over the years, was trying to recruit. When, when she became the chancellor of UP Visayas, mm -hmm. tried to recruit me oh. to go there, but she couldn't find an item that mm -hmm. was that would equal already my position here in Dilma. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we did a lot of work together. Eventually, mm -hmm. in her consultancies in Chad, she always involved me. Mm -hmm. So that was where <laughs> I exercised my writing skills. Uh, okay, but that was oh, after that na. That was after na. That was after uh, na. Okay. Uh, so anyway, how did I get into psych? Uh -huh, so then you moved to UP Diliman? Yeah. And? Uh, yes. Uh, how did I get into psych? Yes. Uh, I got interested in psych. My teacher in psych then was, um, because he was a double major, sociology and um, psychology at the same time, uh, Professor Bonifacio. Manuel? What yeah, Manuel oh, okay. Bonifacio. Uh -huh. So I got interested. I got interested. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, 
<laughs> actually. Uh, I didn't ask anybody's opinion. I just, maybe it's a product of my uh, thinking by myself alone independently over the years. I didn't consult anybody. I just decided uh, I wouldn't go into English because <laughs> okay, maybe because. I didn't believe enough in my, my capability uh, to write. Uh, fiction, etc. So, uh, I went into psych and uh, the rest is... You know, yeah. But how was the, the, the studying of psychology in Diliman in the early years of training? Who were the major influences, ideas uh, okay. that influenced the, you? Um, when I started taking my psych major courses, the most influential at the undergrad, of course, aside from Dr. Alfredo Lagmay, who was my teacher in experimental psychology and perception. The other one that was really quite influential was uh, Asuncion Miteria, Austria. Mm. She's Austria is her married, okay. married name. Uh, she was my teacher in psychological testing, uh -huh. psychological interview, and child psychology. So she was, she was really a good teacher, and she was the one who... Uh, actually made me experience what psychologists do outside of academia. Mm -hmm. Because she, for psychological interviewing, we were required to go to Litton Textile Mills, which was in Marikina mm -hmm. at that time, to interview the workers. Oh. Okay, and okay. to write a paper about the, that particular interview. Uh, and then for psychological testing, she made us write uh, case studies on specific children uh, mm -hmm. from UPIS. Mm. Okay. okay. Uh, so the child uh, that I chose turned out to be a gifted child. That started my interest in giftedness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so she, I administered the Wexler, the Stanford Binet. Uh, and some personality measures, which I don't really recall right now, mm -hmm. um, and wrote up the case study about that child. So okay. it gave me a taste of what psychologists can do mm -hmm. outside of academia. Okay. And then her, her interest in psychology, I remember she wanted me to assist her in a piece of research which uh, now, uh, now I think it was just a replication of mm -hmm. Piaget's experiment. But it was so wonderful to see that Piaget <laughs> really was uh, being very factual what, what were about cognitive development. The usual, that, you know, the usual Piagetian yeah. tasks. You want to tell us a little bit yeah, about conservation, this? <laughs> conservation, conservation. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. How oh, that then uh, because. We did those things. Uh -huh. um, we, I could see that there were age differences even even uh, among mm, very young children. Mm -hmm. That you could see the cognitive changes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so th these are experiments uh -huh. that have to do with conservation of matter, uh -huh. conservation of length. When you say conservation mm. of meaning, uh, yeah. That's a term of, of, yes, uh, of Piaget. Piaget. Yeah, but... It means, uh, can the child really uh, understand, comprehend what uh, uh, the things that you can manipulate, for example, with length, mm -hmm. that would um, that they could they could already see that even if you manipulated it. There was no difference. Okay, so the so, same mass. Yeah. So uh -huh. we say that the child con uh, conserved if uh, he was able to see that even with that manipulation, it, the, the value didn't change at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, the so, mass didn't change, the length didn't change, uh -huh. the okay. volume didn't change. And this is an indicator of progression in cognition. Yes, progression. Yeah. You, could, you could really see, it was wonderful to see that there mm -hmm. were really age differences. And you were so doing this that, with... That made me really get uh -huh. interested in psych. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. Professor Miteria actually started you thinking about measurement and child development. And... Yeah, 
Well, yes, yes, yes. yes. So that was a big influence. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then for Dr. Lagmay, uh-huh. experimental psychology, mm-hmm. uh, first, he it wasn't just doing the experiments, but he mm-hmm. exposed us to the philosophy behind it, mm-hmm. like positivism, mm-hmm. operationalization, mm-hmm. you know, how a very abstract concept can actually be observed by having appropriate manipulations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Dr. Lagmay was the yes, how your yeah. science was honed under Dr. Lagmay. Yes, yes. Uh, it sort of disciplined my thinking. Uh-huh. It sort of disciplined my thinking. Okay. Made me more critical, made me more systematic. Mm-hmm. Uh, in what uh, I was doing and thinking about. But you also worked with Dr. Lagmay shortly after? Uh, well, after I graduated, I taught for one year in UP Tarlac. Uh, and then Dr. Lagmay recruited me uh, to teach. Mm-hmm. But while I was teaching in UP Tarlac, mm-hmm. I already enrolled in the graduate program. Oh, so, okay. like, I, 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 re- I was working as his assistant at mm-hmm. the same time. And that continued uh, after, uh, after my full-time teaching in uh, UP Diliman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and what is the nature of your work with Dr. Ligmay? Well, uh, Dr. Ligmay developed the Philippine Thematic Perception mm-hmm. Test, which consists of 21 pictures mm-hmm. uh, that were drawn by um, uh, an artist mm-hmm. who drew uh, situations, Philippine situations, as described by Dr. Ligmay, mm-hmm. so that you had a variety, the way he explained it to me, he thought about situations where you are alone, mm-hmm. where you are with another person, and where you are with a group. So he mm-hmm. sort of increased the number of people. Uh, and, and some of them didn't even have people. Mm-hmm. So from zero to a group. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and th- these were typical of Philippine situations. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what I, what, he conceptualized the development of Philippine Thematic Apperception Test by looking, again, this reinforced my early learnings with uh, Professor Austria. Mm-hmm. Um, he wanted us to systematically sample the stories uh, based on gender, so male, female, based on age, from children to adults. Mm-hmm. Okay based on uh, location, urban, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, rural, okay? Our rula, rural uh, context was uh, Laguna. Mm-hmm. It's because it was really rural at that time. You know, you, you, uh, we would have to ride in, uh, in this bus that, that's, that doesn't have doors. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, you know, you have to have a bandana because the wind would be blowing right and left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so it was also a very good experience for me because I had to deal with people that I was meeting for the first time. Mm-hmm. And within a short time, I had to establish rapport mm-hmm. so that they would be willing to really reveal something of themselves mm-hmm. in, uh, in that interaction. Uh, the the conceptualization of the methodology was very good aside from looking at the different uh, sectors. He also uh, looked at uh, whether the people were abnormal or pathological. Mm -hmm. So we had to really search for people who would fill up the cells in his sampling plan. And how was that? So, (laughs) well, it was, it took a long time. It took Mm -hmm. a long time, but the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council continued to fund him. Uh-huh. So it took, it took some time for us to gather the data. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did you use this for your thesis? Was this part of your thesis? Uh, my or? thesis was on the stimulus ambiguity of the Philippine Thematic Perception mm-hmm. Test, okay. which yeah. is very technical in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I used a factorial design uh-huh. for I maintain the, the gender as well as mm-hmm. the the language, uh, oh, language. language. What I manipulated was language. English the stories in English, the stories uh-huh. in Filipino. Okay. Uh-huh. okay. 
So yeah. my I, my goal was to for each of the pictures we would have a value for its ambiguity because mm -hmm. the principle in projective techniques is the more ambiguous the stimulus the better it is because it will elicit a variety of responses. Ah, okay. Okay. So if it's very structured then it usually you just have okay. one one story coming out. Ah, okay. And then what is the mm -hmm. outcome of this? Uh, anong mga, uh, mga impact nitong work mo with Dr. Lagbay on the PTAT? The impact on myself? Yes, or on, well, yourself, the discipline? Uh, well, yeah. uh, I, I think the, the, um, the impact on the discipline is actually Dr. We can say that Dr. Lagmay really pioneered in personality assessment mm -hmm. in the Philippines. And uh, that he's, uh, the cultural context was very, very important. I don't know if uh, the cultural thing also impacted on me while I was gathering data. Mm -hmm. Because uh, some of the people in uh, Los Banos who accompanied us mm -hmm. brought along a Pakistani. And? who was also doing field work. On the PTAT? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we, uh, well, you know how it is in the rural area, you have only one, one trail, uh -huh. okay? And here, here comes a farmer walking with his dog, coming down, coming down from the mount, coming down from the same trail, and we had to, we had to meet him. Mm -hmm. and, you, uh, and then the dog started, you know, snarling, mm -hmm. barking. You know what the Pakistani did? He held me by the shoulders and used me as a shield. <laughs> so it was really a very cultural thing for me that uh -huh. the women are dispensable. Okay. Okay. So the Filipino men who were with me were very angry with him. Mm -hmm. Because they would, never, they would protect me mm -hmm. and not use me as a shield. So, okay. uh, you know, cultural factors really matter a lot. Okay, but this is also lesson number two in your gender training from your father to this. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. anong, ano, anong, for, so, for, for you, 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 you worked on the, on the PT-80 then? That was part of your continuing yeah, I, uh, work? Now? Yeah, I uh, gathered data uh, for Dr. Legmai yeah. and then we scored. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 it wasn't just the PTAT because he wanted it validated mm -hmm. against the Rorschach mm -hmm. and the sentence completion mm -hmm. test. So there were three tests uh -huh. that we administered when uh -huh. we went up. So you helped him validate his, uh, mm -hmm. his record. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I understand that you also helped prepare the, the manual for the PTAT uh, yes. subsequently. Actually, yeah. I wrote it by myself because uh -huh. um, upon the request of Dr. Lagmay. Uh -huh. That I write the manual. Okay, but did he get to see the manual? No. Oh, he never did get to see the mm -hmm. manual. Okay, so that is mainly your effort now. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. still being used, marketed? It's uh, being used and marketed. Uh -huh. So it's still widely used in what areas? Clinical psychology generally. But mm -hmm. I keep telling my students it's really meant as a personality measure. Although uh -huh. we have data on on pathologies, uh -huh. but mainly it's really how personality is organized in terms of needs uh -huh. and presses. Presses meaning situation. Okay. Yeah. So the interaction between situation and needs is yeah. very clear when you use the PTAT. Uh -huh. Okay. But this is not the only test and uh, this is not the only measurement that project that you've had, right? Subsequently, uh, you really subsequently, moved into this field. Uh, subsequently, Dr. Lourdes Calaulides Ma and mm -hmm. I collaborated mm -hmm. to come up, funded by uh, UNICEF, to mm -hmm. come up with uh, the early child care and development checklist. Mm -hmm. So it's focused now on children from zero to five, uh, zero to seven, mm -hmm. zero to seven. Okay. Uh, and, and how is this we, test? Uh, um, we have national norms for it. Mm -hmm. So we went out into the to the field. We had a pool of mm -hmm. items. Mm -hmm. And after item analysis, we selected 
the ones that really di di discriminated very well uh -huh. in terms of age differences. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So, so the test is now available? The, the test is now available. In fact, it's available nationwide uh -huh. because um, UNICEF published it mm -hmm. and it's for free. Mm. It's for free. Okay. Okay. But we train, we train people okay. on how to use it. Uh -huh. And then these trainers uh -huh. were supposed to train others. Uh, okay. Who, who is using this test mainly um, and for what purposes? It's available. Uh, it's supposed to be used in every barangay uh -huh. daycare center mm -hmm. because um, it can serve as a screening tool for disabilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the idea is once uh, you administer that and you see that the child falls below the norm, mm -hmm. uh, you can refer to a psychologist who will mm -hmm. do more extensive assessment mm -hmm. and then interventions. Mm -hmm. Because the basic principle in dev psych actually is the earlier the intervention, the better. Mm -hmm. And has it been used for that? Uh, it has it, been how used. Has it been? It's supposed to be used continuously. Uh -huh. Is it? And uh, according to the SWD, who manages the whole you know, Barangay uh -huh. Daycare Center system, uh, they have been using it. Mm -hmm. And that they also evaluated uh -huh. how it's being used. But they never uh, gave us the, the oh. results. No. So we but don't it's a nationwide <laughs> thing. So it, the impact is really nationwide. Nationwide, yeah. Mm -hmm. but that's, that's kind of interesting because it's supposed to have really major implications for very major. early childhood intervention. Very yeah. major. But we don't mm -hmm. know whether it has actually... Really yeah. Well, maybe the that's one thing Dr. Ledesma and I can do again. Uh -huh. yeah. We also developed another, another uh, instrument. Yeah. Uh, this time, it's really uh, for um, looking at uh, child development generally, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. as a screening tool anymore, but uh, to look at what they, uh, the so-called normal child, mm -hmm is able to do okay okay so we pre we we completed that it was also a nationwide uh norming yeah and our fac we involved our faculty yeah they went out in pairs remember okay, yeah, 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 yeah we, uh -huh. we involved our faculty in gathering the data yeah but uh, anong final uh, outcome anong, anong effect nun yeah, sa whoever we presented <laughs> it we presented it and then uh <laughs> actually maybe this is one of the issues Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, I don't know, we should have involved DepEd from the start. Uh, because it, it was supposed to be an input on the development of the curriculum in early child education. Okay? Oh. And they, they, were, they were saying that they couldn't believe that children at this particular age could do some of the cognitive tasks. Uh -huh. They were saying, Pang Ateneo na tayo. Oh. They were so uh, no. <laughs> biased against They're it. Biased against it, <laughs> yeah. in, in a way. Uh, so th those are some of the. Yeah. Um, if there's a change in policy, you have to involve the people who will implement it from the start. That's the lesson to be learned. Uh -huh. Because when you began the work with with Wally, mm -hmm. it was really an academic project. Uh, para, it was. Or, or was well, it connected we were commissioned to some, by. Yeah. UNICEF yes. to develop the skill. Ah, external yes, agency. Yes, it was really, yeah. ano, oh. So, hindi pala siya connected even uh -uh. to the implementing agency. Oh, oh. Hindi, hindi nga. Sign so, no, yeah. one was implementation by DSWD, the other one was implementation by DepEd. So, what could have been, I mean, what can you do now at this mm -hmm. point to sort of make sure, sayang yung tests eh. Sayang Yeah, because sayang. I mean, you know, they're, they're very yeah, interesting. Sayang. Actually, I have been encouraging my students to, uh -huh. To extend, because uh, you you can extend it. Mm -hmm. What what because uh, what we did was preschool. Yeah. What we did was preschool. So to extend into other uh, age groups, other age groups, uh -huh. which I think is very very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has anybody done it? And if any of your no, your PhD not, students, not yet. Not yeah. yet. Ah, okay. Although some of them have used the ECCD as part of their like uh, what is the ECCD? 
Uh, the Edwards, uh, or no, what is ECCD this? ECCD is Early Child Care, oh, and early development. Child care development. Okay, uh, that's not local. Okay. Um, what's her name now? The one, the one who died in in uh, Hawaii. She she used the ECCD for her thesis. Oh, oh Isa. Yeah, yeah Isa Valera. Uh, she yeah, was yeah. my advisor. Oh, was she doing yes, that? Yes, uh -huh. yes. Uh, and that's the one it. that you and Wally developed. Uh, she used it with uh, no, barangay children. Uh, she used it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, so I, you know, some of these ideas you, you have funded by an outside agency for, for the good of the community, but, you know, mm -hmm. means the link up is not too mm -hmm. solid. But your students have been trying to work on it, and that's, I guess, is another positive way well, of looking at it. Well, my students have yeah. used them, but uh, yeah. what I'm uh, trying to do is for them to extend the norms, which uh -huh. is actually quite expensive. Uh -huh. But you do a lot of testing now with children. I see you. Do you use your, your instruments? Well, that's really for my advocacy for um, children with disabilities. Uh -huh. So I assess them for free on Saturdays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're not using those tools, are you? I am. I am. You are? Oh, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about yeah. that. Uh, your, this advocacy yeah. of yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell uh, us well, about that. Actually, How did that start um, up and my you know, uh, impact? No? Actually, um, I work with public school children uh, How did that are, get started? Who are in the SPED program. Uh -huh. uh, and they, they belong to really poor, poor families. How did that start? Actually, um, there was one very good community worker who approached me. Uh -huh if I could assess the children in her barangay. Okay. So, uh, for some time, I was just concentrating on that group of children. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, parang word spread. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the other, other uh, sped classes mm -hmm. also wanted to be assessed. That's why, mm -hmm. the public school, mm -hmm. Anong, anong outcome nun? Anong kahinatnan nung assessment ng mga estudyante? Well, kasi the result of the assessment that I make gives a situationer mm -hmm. on where the child is uh -huh. and then the teachers have to plan the interventions from, from that data. Okay. So I make recommendations about what to concentrate on, mm -hmm. what they can do. I mm -hmm. make suggestions. Uh -huh. okay. And you know what, kung anong nangyayari after yes. that? Did you yes, get yes. That? They and, come back because okay. after one year they come back for more assessment uh, uh, or uh, uh, for more feedback assessment, lang. and then the teachers also give me feedback. Ah, okay, and that one has grown because I see you still with all these kids yeah. on weekends. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> and it's still free. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, because well, they're 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 really in financial, you uh, know, yeah. uh, in dire need. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. One mother was telling me. She has to save for their fare to come over. Oh. Save money so she can pay for their fare. They're, they're as poor as that. One. Okay, where do they come from? There are these people. From everywhere. Oh, well, In Metro Manila. Metro Manila. 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 Metro Manila. Metro Manila. Oh, okay, yeah. And these mm -hmm. are the, on the disabled side or on the gifted side? Ng, uh, uh, both. Ah, both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it, so you also so, get some. It's so, nice to find among the poor yeah. that there are people really with strong potential. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. you, you have done work with the gifted, right? I mean, you, this yes. is one of your advocacies yes, too. Yes. Can you tell us a little more about that? Well, um, Dr. Perla Santos Ocampo mm -hmm. uh, created or developed uh, the Philippine Association for the Gifted. Mm -hmm. And she invited me together with other, well, at the beginning, I think Kuali was also part of it. Mm -hmm. But Wali got too busy and so on. And then the developmental pediatricians were also mm -hmm. part of the group. Yeah. So that was how I uh, started assessing children who were thought to be gifted, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, part of the problem there is sometimes parents think that their child is gifted, but they're not. They're not. So it, it's very <laughs> difficult to. Very difficult. How do you deal with that? Actually, how do you deal with the parents of uh, children who are not as gifted as they thought? Well, I tell them that uh, gen generally this is my approach. Okay. Because okay. uh, I tell them that children are different from each other. Yeah. And this child. 
uh, will benefit from I, I give the I give the uh, interventions I mm -hmm. screen it to them etc et like cetera. what interventions do you well provide? Um, yeah. you could, well there are specific interventions yeah. like for example visual spatial intelligence yeah. you know the the three dimension puzzles uh -huh. That helps very well. In so you, you para may exercises sila. They do exercise. exercise. Uh -huh. Do they do that in session, or they take it home with them, or? No. Uh, well, no. They, they, we cannot. We cannot do that. You cannot make them take it oh, home. Yes, so yes. they have to come and do the exercises. Yes, yes. Ah, so yung parang sessions mo you screen and uh -huh. then exercises. They have to keep coming back for the exercises. Ah. Okay. Hindi naman keep on coming back. Um, kasi, yeah. And then um, from there, the, the parents can pick up. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you ever say, I mean, if you're talking about this, some of these people come from really very poor situations. Do they, do they ever, do you, do you like innovate for, you to know, accommodate? <laughs> you know, some of my insights, yes. insights okay. from my insights. experience is the, <laughs> Our family planning program has to be fixed because uh, women, up to now, uh, get pregnant whether they like it or not. Okay. And then the reality is they attempt to get rid of the baby because oh. they feel like you know, uh, how can I how can I feed this additional mouth etc etc et 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 and then they don't succeed. Mm -hmm. Of course, when the child is born, it's born with disability already. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's a vicious cycle. And, and I think the intervention cannot be after the damage is done. Mm -hmm. cannot be yeah. only that. Yeah. No? It has to be it, government policy, social mm -hmm. policy yeah. uh, has to change. Okay. Okay. Have you tried to... Mm -hmm. Deal with this issue. I mean, have uh, you done? How, how have you tried to deal with this? I mean, you know, it is the government. I know, but have you done any lobbies or whatever? Uh, I well, mm, no. no, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah but, but but maybe that's one thing that we well, It cannot be just one person. Yeah. It yeah, cannot be just true. one person. Yeah, we have true. to. Uh, we have to approach uh, a champion in Congress. Mm -hmm. We have to work with them because actually mm, women's lives are not really that great, uh, especially <laughs> when <laughs> especially when they are financially challenged. Yeah, yeah. You know, I cry. I really cried when I did some field work on family planning, and I uh, encountered this woman living in a hut, na oh no, soil yung floor, mm -hmm. floor niya. Yeah. And then I, I told her, uh, well, I, I was really interviewing her about how she was trying to control for mm -hmm. her pregnancies. And she said that, ah, uh, she's taking the pill. Uh, and I had I asked her to describe how, how she does it, mm -hmm. uh, just to be sure that she's doing it the right way. You know, she told me she halves the pill and takes half of it before contact with the husband. So it really makes you cry. There's the desire to control, yeah. but you know, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we have done yeah. some of that work together. So, yeah. Okay, but uh, maybe maybe continuing on from there because you're really talking about women in poverty, no choices. Um, you you have related to that. You're talking about health for them and their children. Like yes, you you got yes. involved in a lot of yes. health research too, right? The and health research I'm involved with actually. Affect, How did you get there? <laughs> affect the poorest of the poor. Oh yes, okay. okay. Like Hansen's disease. Yeah, this is which leprosy. Is commonly yeah. referred to as leprosy. Mm -hmm. These are the really poor people who get it. And um, but you can also see the values of Filipinos. They are very protective of their family member who has Hansen's, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't. Uh, uh, they try to isolate <laughs> the, because you have to educate them also about how it's transmitted. Mm -hmm. But they they do their own interventions already. That like they they segregate all of the things that he 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 or she would be using. Mm -hmm. Some of them even construct a hut beside the house and so on. 
uh, just to minimize contact mm-hmm. with the, with the uh, Hansen's disease. Yes. Why did you get involved uh, in these things? Why? Because it's one of the diseases that has not been controlled. Or at that time we were doing the research, yeah. it wasn't controlled. But, and it was basically because people had false beliefs about it. But where did it come from? Did it start with some government? Of ano? course, the government yeah. statistics showed that it yeah. was something that could be. Because we... It, It's an age-old problem. Even yes. in the Bible, it's there, no? Yeah. But uh, yes. you, you know, we have ano, Tala, Tala Leprosarium. We have the one in Palawan. You yeah. know, it was yeah, something. Yeah, Kulion. Yeah, yeah. Kulion. Oh, there's one in Cebu. Uh, And then Eversley. there's another one in Eversley. Cebu. Eversley. It's closed down now. But anyway, yeah. one of the interesting things that, because I, I, we all, I also went to Cebu. Yeah. Uh, then Ilocos for uh-huh. ano. The, the the commonalities that uh-huh. I found in terms of the environment yeah. is uh, no, the pottery. If I you do pottery, uh-huh. there yeah, there's yeah in that area uh-huh. they do a lot of pottery. So, so it's the soil. I don't know. Uh-huh. I know. I I'm just think. I I it just it's a thought that crossed my heat. mind that there are some commonalities. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, but how did you get to do that? And paano ka na na interest sa leprosy? Aside from the fact that there's a theoretical perspective na mataas ang incidence, mm-hmm. but how did you personally get involved in? Well, I was invited to join ah, teams. Ah, okay. okay. You were invited uh, to join teams. And, okay. hmm. and these teams were uh, doctors, uh-huh. social so scientists, Department of Health. Department of Health. Ah, yes. okay. So you got involved early yes, on with yes. government initiatives. Ah, specifically okay. also the College of Public Health. Ah. Uh, my collaborators were from public health. Uh-huh. That's why uh, our population was also the poor. Because public health, eh? mm-hmm. public health. The dissertation the, thing, for The example. focus was really, it, it was more, uh, it was... Uh, Quantitative, qualitative type mm-hmm. of research. Meaning, um, what did you do? Uh, not, uh, not just looking at the statistics of leprosy, but also looking into the inner world uh-huh. of the the Hansenites. Okay. You know? mm-hmm. Trying to see, see their perspective. Uh-huh. Uh, so part of it was stigma, the stigma mm-hmm. that they experienced. The stigma, yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, no, uh, but it was, it was also looking at how the family viewed the disease mm-hmm. and family supports. Yes. So construct the, the way they constructed the disease in their minds yeah. and the way they tried to cope because Parang, of those uh, constructions. Para okay. palang the psychology of the yes. Hansenites, mm-hmm. exactly. looking at the yes. social relations, the mm-hmm. cognitive mm-hmm. aspects. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. At the outcome on bets, what what whatever happened to the data? Was it did it go? Was it fed to some government agency? Ah, uh, it was just fed yeah. to the. And anong outcomes no on sa policies? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, I didn't follow through with the, yeah, the policy, yeah. but yeah. it was. But that's, you know, yeah. I think that's what happens to you when you're doing so many things at the same time. Uh-huh. Okay. So you you're through with your research, you give it to them, you give the feedback, you give feedback to the community, then you go back to teaching. I mean, you know, all of these things are happening all at the same time. Yeah. So it's not like I'm a policy researcher and I have yeah. to follow through with it and so on. Then filariasis affects the farmers who deal with abaca plants. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is uh, no, the com- is common. Filariasis is a disease transmitted also by a mosquito. Oh. And uh, like malaria. Uh-huh. Because you know? so I've done work also with malaria. Yeah. And these, these are the um, the ones that have. Uh, oh, make your buyong, legs big. They yeah. call it buyong. It's either the testicles enlarge yeah. or the, the legs enlarge. Yeah. yeah. Okay? And, and it's full of the. Full of the filariasis inside. Oh. Okay, and it's the mosquito uh, yeah. breeds in the abaca plants. But your work on this one has been mainly research, right? Para yes, yes, commission yes. research so, by research uh, yeah. by WHO, yeah. and then uh, the one on malaria. I focused on barangay health workers, and here again you can, well, uh, it, it's a detail, but it's an, an important one. 
Um, in one of the study sites, the, the barangay health worker said mm -hmm. that, that their uh, microscope wasn't working. But that the, my doctor partner in the research, uh, patingin nga, yun pala, baliktad yung lens. <laughs> you know, something as simple as the hindi naman trainin. Hindi naman proper training. Parang, you know. Okay, so parang you've looked at various aspects of the, the health programs in the country. But you know, I remember parang your leprosy study was your dissertation, right? Yes. Was that your first foray into health psychology? Or how did you get no, into this whole no. thing? Mm, and when I, you were dean, yeah, there were also, there were initiatives? Was it when you were dean? There were initiatives to start the ah, health psychology The initiatives program. that I started when I was dean mm -hmm. had to do with a grant from WHO uh -huh. for the development of uh, social science and medicine. That's why Boy Abaya was able to go. Uh, uh, this is her program, right? In health psychology. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joy Natividad. Joy Natividad uh, for population. And, and Susan, then Ortega. Susan for yeah. social psych. Uh -huh. Okay, so those were WHO scholarships yeah. that we were able to work out. But that's different from the one when you were trying to start a health psychology program, was it, in the college? That was before um, your deanship. No, not, not health. No. The one no. with those Vietnamese coming over? Uh, no, the Vietnamese were already recipients of uh, grants uh, who... I think you were part of it. Yeah. They wanted to learn how to do research. Oh. In, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I involved in different departments mm -hmm. to train them. Okay. Research on health side, yeah. uh, on, on health. Yeah. So Social you, science aspects of health. Okay. So you have been very, very active in research, not only doing your own research, but also training about research, right? And you, you, mm -hmm. you still do that for the military, is it? You also uh, yes, do yes, a program yes, with them? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, I, uh, I taught um, research methodology yeah. in the National Defense College. Uh -huh. Yes. And you also did that with the ethics program, right? Yes, that yes. The ethics program of the... Well, yes. Yeah. The ethics program. Do you still do research now? Uh, well, the last research I did was to do the manual. <laughs> of the PTAT? Yeah, but what okay. I want to what I want to do, and I started gathering my materials, is to write about Jose Rizal from a multi multiple intelligence perspective. Ah, oh. Because I think he's a good example of multiple intelligence. But but this is also the sad thing about research, right? Because the, the university, in fact, turns out a lot of valuable research. We farm them Correct. out to the government, the, the other institutions that could do with them, and then... Maybe they don't have the resources mm -hmm. to deal with it. But, so, I mean, it's but, also sad. But I'd, I'd like to go back to my insight about they have to be, they, we all work, we teach our students, you have to involve the respondents of yeah, your yeah. study. Yeah, yeah. But you also have to involve the agencies, the agencies mm -hmm. yeah. from the beginning. So they will yeah. own it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but have you ever tried that? Did you ever have any research where the agency came in right from the beginning? And how did that work? You know, uh, actually, uh, uh, our study with Wally about developing the ECCD checklist, mm -hmm. we involved everybody. Uh -huh. We involved, you know, the province, the municipality, the barangay, the city, uh -huh. etc. Yeah, uh, and, and did it work they better? Were, they were with us all along. And then? Mm. And then, mm, well, they were very enthusiastic. Actually, uh -huh. and uh, some of the the existing teachers because mm -hmm. they're not they weren't really trained to be teachers, no man, but they mm -hmm. were the ones taking care of the kids in the barangay mm -hmm. health centers. Mm -hmm. uh, they they were very enthusiastic and they were giving us feedback about you know they did this, they did that, and so on. So, pero pero I don't know maybe. Uh, it has to be decentralized or the people in the central office have to do something about mm -hmm. really helping yeah. the communities. That's true. So part of my dream is to be a barangay captain. 
<laughs> Good idea. Because everything, <laughs> because everything hap- should be happening in the barangay, di ba? Yeah, yes. that's that's true. All of the problems, parang na. Yeah, yeah. Pero nalala ko lang yung ECCD studies mo. I mean, they did they help you the data collection and then they started implementing it. But the other part is if when they find out that the child has these disabilities, it's really to send them off to another set of agencies to deal with it, right? Ah, uh, the screen. The screen. Yeah, the screen mo na sila. And then the next step is to be, you know, acting on it. So they now we know that what to do. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, they know how to do. Ah, uh, yeah, I and, and but oh, you know our problem. The problem partly is psychology. Uh, oh, what do you mean? The problem no, partly is psychology. We're not really where we are needed. Uh, meaning, could meaning, you elaborate? Ano, on that? everybody is concentrate more or less the one well the, in the urban areas because mm-hmm. that's where you have paying patients. Oh, you know what I mean? yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so, so the problem yeah. is with psychology also as okay. a profession. All right. Okay, so we, we have looked at your work in measurement, in developmental psych, in health psychology. Maybe you would like to tell us a little bit, but you've been an administrator for a long time, right? You've been dean, yeah. you've been chair. Would you like us? And you were head of the office of... Uh, tell us about the initiatives that you have uh, initiated okay. uh, and the impact of that. What, what were the... What were the contributors to such uh, things and what were the outcomes? Maybe as chair, as dean, okay, as, as, chair, as a I, missions head. Uh, as chair, uh, I sort of, um, maybe I was a compromise candidate <laughs> because it was also parang the second time for electing a chair. This is the 1980s, right? You were, you were the first female chair. Yes, yes. yes. Uh-huh. But before that, Um, Dr. Lagmai was displaced by, uh, uh, it was FG, mm-hmm. but FG didn't last, he didn't like administrative ah, work. Okay. And so he be, uh, he... He quit? No. He, no, he... Vare. Oh, And there. then Vare uh-huh. also, that's why I became the ah, chair. okay. All right. Be- became the chair. And, but in a sense... But, you know, uh, ano, um, maybe it was also part of my early socialization that if you have to accept a responsibility, you have to, to really make good do it, it. Uh-huh. make good. No? Yeah. So, uh, I started looking at the faculty profile and I realized at that time that the ones who were sent out on the original Rockefeller grants were um, already, they didn't do any postdoc. Mm. They didn't do any postdoc. So I was thinking maybe uh, it's about time. Uh, mm-hmm. And at that time, I already had the curricula for DevSci, IO, uh, Personality, Philippine Psych, and mm-hmm. so on. You know? uh, so... I was thinking about people who would head those on, or contribute to the development of those disciplines. So, uh, Daisy and uh, Dr. David were funded partly by the leftover of the Rockefeller grant to, to go again to for their postdoc. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, because I was thinking of the development of the development of developmental psych. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Domingo mm-hmm. for aging in Harvard, oh, okay. and then uh, Grace uh, for the younger mm-hmm. ano, group in Dev site. She went to Banks, mm-hmm. Bank Street, Bank Street, Bank yeah. Street. Uh, in New York. Yet, uh, who else? Who was the other one? I think there were five of them. Mita was supposed to go. Mita was supposed to go, but she she didn't, refi- she, she didn't want I to go. I benefited from that because yeah, I went. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, because they, they put it out again and then uh, nobody uh, was interested. And I said, I'm interested. I wanted uh, to do the political psych certification program. Uh, I did. Uh, uh, Yeah, so that mm-hmm. was really nice. But other than that, you were also very involved in the curricular planning, not only at the department, but also the universities, at GE. So, you know, oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, uh, so, so, social tama, tama, they, they were revising the GE at that time, the yeah. revised GE program. So mm-hmm. we had social social science one, social science two. Mm-hmm. So I was very much involved in social science one, mm-hmm. which uh, tried to be interdisciplinary, mm-hmm. no? Uh, psychology, 
sociology, anthropology, mm-hmm. originally. Mm-hmm. And then the other departments started uh, thinking that they should also be there. So linguistics mm-hmm. got in, uh, population got in. So it was it was a broader an introduction mm-hmm. to social science one. Okay. And then I got involved in writing the mm-hmm. writing. There were also grants for writing uh, textbooks mm-hmm. for Open U. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why I got I got involved in the writing of that. And mm-hmm. and what were the final outcomes? How is social science mm-hmm. one now? Social science one, I think, is fading <laughs> oh. because you know, we together with the other uh, G courses because they have limited they have limited it to a few. But what uh, do you think are the fine? I mean, in, in your assessment, ano kaya ang kahinatnan ng ganyang mga classing shortcutting? Well, <laughs> removal uh, of certain things. I I think I think there's great value in liberal education. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the things that you you can only find in a GE program because it will help you uh, conceptualize better mm-hmm. and then have a broader view of the world around you mm-hmm. uh, and I, well I've had feedback from our graduates mm-hmm. who say na, they realize when they are already practicing the value of their GE education mm-hmm. Because that was the mark of a UP graduate before, mm-hmm. yeah. and then the other universities started to think about having their own GE programs. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you think about the idea that anyway mm-hmm. you can Google everything, you know? What, what do I think? Yes. <laughs> no, I think if that's your attitude, mm-hmm. it's as good as you know, maybe for 24 hours, and the integration is not there. Ah, okay. You are just it's looking the at bits of facts here and there okay. so the integration is very very important yeah maybe i ask a little bit more about your time as an administrator that's now what were mm-hmm. what were the issues that you confronted as a woman in the service of the university well, and how did you deal with this um at that time um when i started being chair mm-hmm. all the other chairs were male and as the only female, I think. What is the effect so, of uh, that? How was that? Well, uh, <laughs> very young, very young, not mm-hmm. matarai like I am now. <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, I sort of just waited for everybody to say what they wanted to say. They were very noisy, so I resorted to writing, which was very good. You know? mm-hmm. I I I would write the chair, I would write the dean, I would write the chancellor about our needs mm-hmm. and you know i can maybe it's boasting or bragging about it i got everything i wanted mm. i got you know uh, that's why i cannot appreciate now the administrators that are having problems about getting this or that funded i because i think up has so much money mm-hmm. maybe it's a matter of presenting it mm-hmm. presenting your needs and so I did it in writing. Mm-hmm. I just kept quiet during the meetings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember one of your Because I couldn't compete with the shouting of the males. Oh. And I didn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember one of your initiatives when you were dean. You remember, remember that nice program we had with yes. the young, young faculty doing a series of lectures? Older faculty also having a series of lectures. Yeah, you know. Money from Liaguno. Chancellor yeah. Liaguno. Yeah, up to now, you know, the... the the young faculty who went through that yeah. are always tell me they really appreciated it. Because yeah. we, every, it was a weekly thing. They would present a paper yeah, and we researching. provided the Miranda. <laughs> uh, it, yeah. yeah. And then some of them ended up using that paper for their thesis. It was a, yeah. no, it was a nice. Uh, yeah. It was a really nice program, actually. I, I liked, and then there was the compliment with the senior faculty, yes. naman, presenting also their works. So it was like nagkakaalaman ano yung trabaho nino, mm-hmm. and then there were many collaborations mm-hmm. that arose. Because Sorry. before, parang we, they were the the junior faculty were also feeling oppressed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the 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 junior faculty were complaining about not having a chance to, you know. Be, uh, and then their tenure was also in question because they didn't have their MA for, 
So I, I, I wrote, I wrote the chancellor, asked for funding, and it was approved. And then the senior faculty, who already had some papers to present, also had their opportunity, but they were separate. Because the junior faculty, I think, also felt more confident talking to their peers rather than, you know, Although being scrutinized by the senior yeah. faculty. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah, it started the, the the group of young faculty. Actually, there yes. was an organization. Uh, yeah. What's the name? What's their name? Uh, I forgot. Uh, uh, starts with a K. I know it starts with a K. But I can't remember now. The two of us cannot remember. <laughs> what, ad <laughs> what advice would you give female administrators balancing admin work with research and teaching wow. and maybe family life? I mean, how is work life balance achieved? Is that is that even a valid question these days? Uh, these days. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we have to make some assumptions like like uh, do you live nearby you don't have to mm -hmm. go through the traffic because that really subtracts from the uh, from the family life mm -hmm. <laughs> so much no mm -hmm. because you have to stay in traffic for at least four hours a day yeah. two in the morning two at night uh, yeah. but uh, so uh, let's assume that you you are able to have campus housing, yeah. and you know, uh, my advice would be do as much of your work as you can during office hours, mm -hmm. and when you're at home, don't concentrate on concentrate on your children. Don't uh -huh. do any other type of work until they're asleep. Oh, is that what you did? Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> that's what I did. Uh -huh. That's why my son said. Uh, do you want to go into psychology? And he said, no, I don't think so. Because when I go to bed, you're reading. When I wake up in the morning, you're reading. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> but uh, no, that's, that's one, one advice I can, I can share, yeah. uh, which I did with my own family. It's part of you have to do your work around mm -hmm, your life. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a struggle. Yes, your landmark contributions to the field, that's... Mm -hmm. uh, well, in, in measurement, um, PTAT, uh, because I, I made the manual. Philippine Thematic Perception Test, I wrote the manual for that. And then uh, the ECCD checklist, because it's supposed to have nationwide in, impact, the Early Child Care and Development Checklist which is supposed to have a nationwide impact because it's supposed to be there in every barangay. Mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, uh, well, right now, I consider it very significant that I am able to be of service to the poor children who mm -hmm. have disabilities. So I, I see them regularly. Um, uh, well, for the university, I think uh, I initiated the development of the different areas of psychology, uh, more areas than what was in the mind of Dr. Lagmay. Uh, and I, um, yes, uh, the development of the faculty also. Yeah, we within. supported our PhDs. We have supported <laughs> their PhDs. Uh, and in, in terms of supporting the faculty, the female faculty, I got a small grant from UNICEF to oh, yes. have a nursery. Yeah. <laughs> to have a nursery for the nursing mothers. Yeah, there was an epidemic because once. all of them were pregnant <laughs> at the same time. And so and had babies at the same time. So yes, to yes, have yes. breastfeeding. Yeah. Yes, so we <laughs> had a little room. Yeah. Right yeah. now it's gone. But maybe they will need it again because there are a bunch of people getting married. Getting and, married, yeah. yes. But uh, also, Betsy, you, you were the first head of the admissions office. Ah, yes. You must have set that up. Oh, okay. Up. Um, we, the yeah, admissions yeah. office, I think my contribution there uh, was actually the excellence equity admissions system. It was a change in policy that President Javier wanted to have uh, so as to nationalize the population again of UP. Because before, Diba? All of the valedictorians and salutatorians would get in. Uh, so it was his dream to have uh, the equity part was there's a palugit for every province mm -hmm. so that at least that province will be represented. But they had to have an acceptable 
Uh, so, only it's a palugit. Uh, it wasn't the the cut off, but may pal- konting palugit. So, they would have the opportunity to get in. Yeah, but we changed that, right? They they reverted uh-huh. that. Did they reverse that again? Uh well, actually, President Nimenso was supportive of it, because uh-huh. e- equity, eh, di ba? Excellence, equity. But you were also a party to the beginnings of Pahinungod, right? Yes. Uh, and, well, it was Lady Lady Carino. Yes, but you were very involved active, yeah. me, and I was involved in debriefing the volunteer teachers who who went to the really, really, really remote areas. Mm-hmm. But they, they they were very nice stories that uh, that we got from them. Yeah. And we're resurrecting Pahinungod, right? Yes, they're resurrecting Pahinungod. <laughs> So that, that's really, and this is the university's advocacy program, right? I mean, this is like yes, going yes. giving back to the community. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. Last yes. words. So what would you maybe what what would you say to the academic just starting at UP perhaps? Yes. Yeah. Or advice to the mm-hmm. current generation of UP academics? Uh, the current generation of UP <laughs> academics. I hope you stay on and uh, be inspired by the traditions of the university, which are honor and excellence. Maintain your integrity and do your work the best way that you can.